In this brief video, we're going to discuss how improved code quality, monitoring and protection can be used to address worms, trojans and viruses. So in the last video, we take, took a look at worms, trojans and viruses and some of the many problems that they can cause. Here we're going to look at some of the ways, though, that you can help protect yourself against malicious code. Now, the first is not really a way that the average user can protect themselves, but it's a way that organisations can help users, and that's by improving the quality of code. A common mistake sometimes made by developers is not catching cases of possible buffer overflow in the protections they're, in the programmes they're writing. With buffer overflow, part of the programme that you're writing doesn't fit into the memory space allocated in memory. Instructions, therefore, bleed into other parts of memory which it shouldn't do, and these can now be executed as if they're program instructions. Malicious code can make use of this exploit. Now, from a standard user's point of view, there are many things which can be done to help prevent against the dangers of worms, trojans and viruses. An obvious one, but one often overlooked by users, is regular updates and maintenance of your PC. You regularly update and service a car, but how often do you do regular routine maintenance on your PC? Make sure you're installing all operating system updates and patches. Make sure you have an antivirus program, and if you do, that the virus definitions are being updated regularly. Popular antivirus companies have full-time developers working all the time. They write new definitions, two viruses and send them out to your program. If your virus definition software is a week out of date, there could potentially be dozens or hundreds of new viruses that your program is unaware of. However, the biggest area, to be honest, is what we think of as educating users. In all the examples I used in my previous video, you would have noticed that humans are really the weak point in the system when it comes to computers. Social engineering and the idea of phishing emails is a great way of exploiting users. An email which looks genuine from, say, your bank account, asking you to log on and confirm your details, could simply be a fake yet realistic looking website. You type your details in and the person on the other end of that website now has full access to your bank account. Another good way is simply to install decent firewall and spam filtering software, like the typical software many organisations and schools employ. 